In the previous video, we looked at ways to use rainwater around the home. This video covers collecting the rainwater. Most roofs are suitable for collecting rainwater, except roofs with pre-1980 paint, which may contain lead, roofs with bitumen, treated timber, or a chimney flue from a wood fire. Water from roofs near heavy industry or farming areas that spray chemicals may only be suitable for irrigation and toilet flushing where there's no contact with people. Your local council or water authority can advise you further. Lead flashings and lead soldering can be painted and sealed, but only use the rainwater for uses where there's no contact with people. Water from roofs with overhanging trees can be stained yellow or brown. Okay for garden irrigation, but not for washing clothes and not great for toilet flushing. Make sure gutters are installed to comply with the codes. A 1 in 100 fall is recommended. Keep leaves out of gutters and remove overhanging limbs if possible. Keep joints as flush as possible and fit outlets to the underside of gutters to avoid ponding around the joints. If your roof collects a lot of leaves, fit good quality leaf screen to all gutters and roof valleys. If there is no leaf screen on gutters, considering fitting leaf shedding rain heads. Install them where they can be easily cleaned and where some splashing water won't cause a nuisance. Or install a single screen at the point of entry to the tank. Some are self-cleaning, others need occasional inspection and emptying. From the gutters, the rainwater flows to the downpipes and stormwater pipes. Drainage design depends on whether your tanks are above or below ground. Stormwater drainage to below ground tanks is much the same as draining to a street channel. Plastic or metal downpipes connected to in-ground stormwater pipes, graded to the tank. For above ground tanks, there are two options, dry or charged stormwater pipes. Dry stormwater pipes, fixed to the building above the inlet of the tank, may be acceptable for short runs from one or two downpipes, but not from one side of the house to the other. In this instance, a charged line may be the solution. A charged line drops below floor level, or below ground, then rises to the tank inlet level, so it holds water or remains charged. All charged pipes must be properly jointed and supported sewer grade pipe. If charged lines are part of a rainwater system used for drinking, they must be potable grade polyethylene or lead free PVC. There must be at least 300 millimetres between the tank inlet level and the top of the charge down pipe. A cleaning eye must be provided at the lowest point in a charged line to allow it to be drained and cleaned during extended dry periods. Roofs can be very dirty, especially after a long dry period. A first flush diverter prevents some of the initial flow of dirty water from the roofs and gutters entering the tank. This is probably the most common type, but there are others. Rainwater flows into the diverter. When it fills, the float blocks the entry and the rest of the water flows to the tank. A small hole at the bottom lets the diverter empty over a number of hours, readying it to collect rainwater next time it rains. A 10 litre diverter like this is usually installed for every 50 to 100 square metres of roof. Larger units can service a bigger roof area. Diverters need to be cleaned regularly, so make sure there is enough clearance under the end to allow the filter to be removed. Angling the end 45 degrees out from the wall makes it easy to unscrew the cap. The next video in the series looks at storing the water collected. You'll also find more information on the Trade Secrets website.